So in fluid kinematics, we have two important scalar function. One is called as stream function, is represented by psi, and second is velocity potential, represented by phi. Normally, stream function is exist and defined only for two dimensional, and velocity potential is defined for three dimensional. So the both are the scalar quantities. So we have x-axis, y-axis. Along x-axis, we have u component of velocity. On y-axis, we have v component of velocity. So if we differentiate psi with respect to x, we get the velocity perpendicular to x, that is v. And if differentiate psi with respect to y, then you get minus u. Similarly, you will get velocity u if we y with respect to y, we will get v. And if we differentiate phi with respect to z, we will get w. Phi exists only for a rotational flow and del square phi is the Laplace equation that you can use. So we have the slopes of the stream function and the velocity potential that is dy by dx equals to m1 is same as minus v by u and for velocity potential the slope is given as u by v that is m2. Since the product of two slope m1 and m2 is minus 1 we can conclude here that the streamlines and equipotential lines are always perpendicular to each other. So these streamlines, uh, velocity potential lines will form the flow net. In that case, we can calculate discharge per unit width. The total derivative of the stream function d psi is del psi by del x into dx plus del psi by del y into dy. Now assuming that the width is unity, if we multiply this quantity by 1, where 1 represents the unit width, recall that del psi by del x is equals to v. So it is v multiplied by dx multiplied by 1. This one is minus of u into dy into 1. Recall here dx is your this distance along x-axis and width is 1. So this represents the area dx multiplied by 1. And to this area, your velocity is perpendicular. This is the exact definition of discharge. Area multiplied by velocity. Similarly, dy is vertical line, width is 1. So this is a again area dy by 1 and this time it is multiplied by u which is perpendicular to this area. So this quantity also represents the discharge. So whenever you have to calculate discharge for unit width simply take mod of psi 2 minus psi 1 that is the difference of stream functions at two points final point minus initial point but always take absolute value. So number of times they will ask you the questions on the basic pictures of fluid motion that in what condition the fluid will translate and deform and angular deformation and rotation. So let's consider this is a fluid element and this element is linearly transformed along x-axis and then transform along y-axis without changing the shape and the size. So this type of motion when the fluid particle does not change its shape only changes the position does not deform along x-axis and y-axis this is only possible when the motion is translation and this motion is only possible if the velocity along x direction u is constant even along y direction is also constant. Constant means does not depend on x and y. Now consider a situation here. This is our original fluid particle. So this fluid particle is deforming along x direction as well as y direction and have translation motion also. So we have translation and deformation here along x and y axis. This is only possible if u is a function of x, v is a function of y. So in this case your x direction, x dimension will deform as well as y dimension will deform. And similarly we have your y dimension also deform. The dimension has been increased that I have shown here. So in this case we have, we can define the strain along x direction which is epsilon x is del u by del x. This quantity is coming in per second. That is why we have written dot e dot x, epsilon dot x. Similarly, we have epsilon dot y. So we have del v by del y. So these are basically the gradients along x and y axis. Now let's consider that we have more complex situation now in the third case in which your velocity u is a function of both x and y direction. Similarly, your v is also a function of x and y. So in that case, your fluid will translate, will deform and will deform angular also. So this is pure translation now. Since it's a function of x, the element will deform along x-axis and y-axis like this one. 
and since u is a function of y also so we have a angular deformation like this we have a angular deformation and the final element will look like this so this is the case of translation plus angular deformation plus rotation this is only possible if u is a function of both x and y as well as v is a function of x and y the second case is of translation plus linear deformation so the shear strain along x and y direction is given as 1 by 2 del v by del x plus del u by del y it's only possible if you have a u and v are a function of x and y u and v are a function of x, on, x only and v is a function of y then this derivative does not exist that is angular deformation is not possible or rotation is not possible so rotation about z axis is given as 1 by 2 del v by del x minus del u by del y because one term is clockwise and one term is anticlockwise.